guys and welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a while, I'm sorry, but I'm so happy to be back here with you guys today because I'm finally doing my most requested video ever. That's right, title spoiled it, a bag collection video. You guys have pretty much been requesting this since the day I got on YouTube, so I'm sorry it's taken me this long. I was a little nervous, a little apprehensive. Love watching these kinds of videos, but I wasn't sure if I was the right person to be doing them. I don't know, felt a little bit showy to me, a little, it made me uncomfortable, but I, I addressed the issue with you guys this week on Instagram, and so many of you guys wanted to see it that here we are for part one of my bag collection video. That's right, I'm doing it kind of my way. Instead of doing one very long, abrasive video that would have you on your ass, for hours. I said the A word on the internet, oh my god. I decided to break it down to all of my favorite design houses that I have collected little wonders from over the years. And yeah, so if you subscribe and hit that bell, you'll get a notification every time I publish one, probably bi-weekly if I'm being good. So for this first video, episode one, if you'll call it, I don't know, I know it's not that serious, but it makes me kind of excited to have a series. Uh -huh. We're gonna be talking about not only the fashion house that has hurt my wallet the most in recent years, ever since Mario Grazia's arrival, but also uh, the brand that brought me my very first ever designer bag, uh, Christian Dior. I'm not gonna give you guys a history lesson, but I mean, it's been around since the 40s. Most beautiful couture pieces, ready to wear accessories. The man himself is quite the legend. Incredible, notable designers have uh, been at the house since its helm. Of course, Christian Dior, you've had John Galliano, Ralph Simmons, now, as I said, Maria Grazia. So a uh, beautiful, long, ladylike history Dior has, and I'm so happy uh, that I have little pieces of it gathered around me here today. That's right, there's quite a few. So get ready, and uh, yeah, let's get started. Not really sure in what order to do this. I don't know if I should just do it randomly, most recent to oldest, oldest to newest, but since I did talk about Dior being the first ever designer bag I owned, I guess I should show you this girl first. She'll be she'll be familiar to you if you've watched my bag video with Mel. <laughs> this little light blue denim Dior saddle with silver hardware and little sort of metallic patent pink leather. Maybe it's leather, maybe it's plastic, I don't know. I remember the day well. We were in Miami. Uh, my mother would always take me to Bell Harbor shop and we'd walk around, window shop, and uh, for a long time, I, I've been I've been into fashion for a bit. I don't know if you guys can tell by how I kind of run my life today. But uh, yeah, it was my dream to kind of own one of these pieces, but they felt like they were for grown-ups. I was still quite young, so uh, it was not gonna happen for me. And for some reason on that fateful day when we walked into Dior at Bell Harbor shops, my mother obviously took pity on me of some kind. I don't know, it was my birthday. Around my birthday, not the birthday day. That would have been way too good a story. And I don't know if I was begging or what happened, but she thought it was age appropriate enough for me, I guess, uh, that I was ready for my first ever, I guess I had been begging for a bit, <laughs> for uh, for this great responsibility that then became an addiction. So maybe she regrets it, but here she is in all her glory. You guys have probably seen a lot of saddles recently in my closet even. I have a problem, maybe because I have such an affinity from them because it was my first bag ever. But yeah, I cherished this. I still cherish this to pieces. It's gorgeous, it's vintage. You can find many of these online still. They're a little more pricey ever since they reissued them recently. But uh, yeah, if you wanna find a good vintage saddle, there's a ton of them on the internet. This one's really special to me. It kind of shows, I have the same aesthetic. I haven't changed much. Denim, pink, I don't know. It feels like it's on brand. It goes well with my sweater. So I'm a big fan of this guy. Warm place in my heart. And yeah, thanks mom. You, look what you started, good job. Uh, moving away from the saddles, only f to return there a little bit later. Uh, I guess there was a big gap there. I wasn't really buying accessories from Dior because most of these bags around me were kind of purchased in the last four or five years. I have incredible reverence for Maria Grazia as she left Valentino to come to Dior and uh, kind of reinvigorated the house and melted my heart with all of her incredible accessories and ready to wear and couture and messaging. It's all very cool and empowering for women and the accessories kind of uh, kind of embody that including <laughs> this guy, it's the Dior Revolution, one of her very first designs for the house. Why do I, I don't know, I like brand house, I'm just like changing words, I'm just looking for different synonyms, I hope you guys aren't getting annoyed. Anyways, I got this guy at Fashion Week, I wanna say two, three years ago. Uh, the Dior store on Madison was the first to ever receive the collection, like the accessory collection. I had seen the show and I was just drooling. People were kind of criticizing it because it was similar to her Valentino designs, but I, on the other hand, absolutely loved it, loved the corseted bustiers with the branded straps, the embroideries, tool. I'm a big fan of tool, what can I say? And I loved the more edgy look that she gave Dior a little bit. I don't know, look at that hardware. And I love I love a good branded moment. So I walked into the Madison store and the girl told me how impossible these were to get. And she talked my ear off, great essay. So here I am, <laughs> went home with this guy. I I can't put him down, her down. What is it with me in pronouns? Uh, I absolutely love it. I love, I, I still reach for her, him all the time. What? 
What gender are you? Again, it's silver hardware. It's a great cream color. I know a lot of you guys have kind of not complained, but been concerned about the fact that it is smooth leather. I've put this guy through the ringer. Pretty good, pretty like, pretty good. There's one tiny scratch here, but no color transfer, which is kind of impossible when I think about it. I think I have worn this quite a bit with jeans. Not too many scratches, great quality, nice thick leather. I love the stitching, I love the magnets. Also, we have a big guitar strap in there, which I like wearing it with a lot. At first, I didn't love the thickness of the guitar straps, but now, as you'll see, I obviously grew to love them because I own quite a few. Uh, but yeah, it's a great bag. I say it all the time, white is my favorite neutral. Any accessories, a white pump, a white boot, a white bag. I'm into off-white cream. Champagne, not so much, but keep it in this, in this color family, non-color family, and I'll be happy. So this guy's the Dior Revolution. After that, Still from Maria Grazia, still a recent or design that I think you can still get your hands on. We have the Dior Addict. Uh, I fell in love with this guy, this one's a him, uh, in Spain at a Dior store in Marbella, I wanna say, but because I don't really like the whole customs thing, I decided that I did want this bag, but I didn't wanna purchase it there. So I called my uh, sales associate, Leah, the lovely Leah Holt Renfrew. If you guys know her, you'll love her. And I asked her if it was possible to order this bag because that's kind of my rule. If I'm able to order it in Canada, then I buy it in Canada. I won't buy it anywhere else. I won't buy it internationally or in the US. So Leah said, absolutely, I'll order it for you and it'll be there when you when you arrive so I got home picked this little beauty up and we've been in love ever since I'm not kidding these Dior bags are the ones I reach for the most even if they've been around for a while even if there's new bags coming in I find that they're just still so trendy and timeless at once and I find that to be so like a hard quality to kind of have in a bag I find that they're either a moment like a fleeting moment or a classic but I find these uh these bags kind of embody both I'm a big fan Jesus look at all the praises I'm talking it's got gold hardware it's canvas the oblique navy print also let's face it I'm not the only one who died of excitement when the oblique print came back I was so so thrilled this was one of the first bags I think it was the first bag that came back with the print and then the book tote and then the saddle anyways easy to say I, I had to get it love the gold hardware I love the way it looks with denim with navy with red sort of like a Tommy Hilfiger color scheme big fan it's got the little lock here super cute nice size too this is the small one they make a bigger one now I believe leather piping I reach for it more than I thought I would honestly because I'm more of a black and white than like navy sort of a sort of color wearer is that a is that a thing that we're saying now but I definitely wear it all the time absolutely love it it's a great purchase definitely recommend it the prices keep going up though which is annoying but definitely love this guy I'm not sure if we're going in order still but I think we have been going in order so next up a bag that I do not regret buying and I thought I would regret buying but I really don't again New York that Madison store that faithful Madison store that obviously has very very good essays because I always find myself kind of picking bags up there they're like you'll never see it ever again it worked <laughs> This Dior checkered book tote. This is from the first collection that issued the book totes. They had this checkered number. They had a multicolored sort of embroidered little, little guy. And they had the navy oblique. Now you'll see them everywhere. They're beautiful. They have a bunch of different patterns, prints. You can get your name stitched on in the back. But I feel really cool that I got this guy not only before the price is, uh, hiked up which always uh, brings a small tingle to my heart but also because this guy's discontinued you cannot get this collections print anymore being a big fan of skate culture and vans I was so happy to get something that felt like a hybrid for me also I'm really into monochromatic looks I love wearing white and black together and this really makes a statement and it goes with a lot more than I thought it would that's another theme about these bags I wore it yesterday even though I purchased it probably over two years ago the price point was good at the time now it's a little bit harder to handle but I'm such a fan and I feel so lucky that I have this this cool little unique piece of Dior history. I brought it to Tokyo. It's a good travel bag. It's huge. But again, it's canvas, so you gotta be a little more careful. But yeah, absolutely love the Dior book tote. Would definitely recommend it. If I didn't have one, I would buy one. All right, uh, the next bag is also a Dior attic, but a little bit different. So this guy was technically a present, I guess you could say. My mom had picked out a couple handbags for us. So one for herself for Christmas and one for me for Christmas. When we got to Miami, she was like, okay, open it, open it, open it. And I opened this which I already owned and I guess she didn't know that I had purchased myself so I was very excited and told her how much I loved it but how I loved it so much that I already owned it so I called again my buddy Leah at the Dior store in Montreal and she told me no problem don't worry about it when you get back you can give me back the bag and I'll give you store credit for something new and funny enough this Dior attic bag was the exact same 
cost. Like same price to the scent and I love a gray. Again, a great neutral. I had never really seen a bag like this one. I don't think it's a common, at least I, I've still seen them in store, but for honestly for a while I couldn't figure out the name. I didn't realize it was also Dior Addict. I love gray and gold. I find it to be a rare combo. It looks really, really pretty. Uh, same clasp as the other little Dior Addict bag with a, so you got the little lock with the little key over here could fit a ton inside. It's so great for the kind of Montreal dreary weather that we've been having, especially recently, because you can really pull off a gray bag all year round, I would say. Absolutely love it. Again, it's that same smooth leather as the Dior Revolution I showed you guys. So you gotta be a little careful though. I've put these guys through the ringer and they still look pretty gosh darn good. Another big guitar strap, similar details as the Dior Revolution when you look at it really. But yeah, she's really cute. I love her so much. There's something about a gift, right? A gifted bag just makes you feel like you have a bigger responsibility towards it. I really, really love it. Super beautiful. Again, I feel like I'm repeating myself. Love the color, love the hardware, love the branding. It's so pretty, you can fit so much. But yeah, big fan and thanks mom. It's okay. I ended up being really happy. So next up, I'm gonna tell you a story. The story of a girl that has a really, really big problem, like a, an, a habit, I think is what you call it. It's a drug and that drug is for the reissued saddlebag. If you know me, well, I don't think I talk about it that, I don't talk about bags really with my friends that much. I have you guys to talk to about it now, but when this saddlebag was reissued, I wasn't really interested if I'm honest. It didn't matter about the influencer marketing. I was just kind of like, I have one. I don't know if it's still like, it still feels relevant to me. I don't know if, I, I don't know how I would style it even. And I just, in my head, I was like, no, it's a definite no. They're very pricey too. The, these bags, when they came back out, the price point is up there. So I was like, I'd rather get something a little, a little more unique, a little different. Flash, flash forward to this psychotic human. <laughs> if, if only she knew then what I know now. Let's start from the beginning then. So this past summer, 2018, we were lucky enough to travel as a full family to Europe, which was incredible. So my brother, his five kids, his wife, my parents, my Peter. And before we left, I felt the need for something new and spicy. And I had seen, I think it was on YouTube, I had seen some reviews and I kind of understood the concept that the designer Maria Grazia was kind of trying to introduce with this, which was the way you accessorized them with the sold separately straps and where are you little Mitza? Adorable little Mitza you could attach to the handle. And I really, really liked the idea of customizing and making the bag kind of my own, even though it was kind of a very popular, not common, but popular bag. And at the time it was impossible, impossible, impossible to get your hands on. And uh, the black one was even a rarity. So I called my buddy Leah, recurring theme again. <laughs> and I was like, do you have a saddle? I'm leaving for Europe tomorrow and I don't want to be in Europe and want to buy a saddle. She's like, yeah, I have the black one. And I was like, black one. I really, really wanted an oblique print one, but because I had the blue oblique print Dior Attic bag, I didn't really want a blue oblique print saddle. So I was like, oh, I like, I mean, black is a great neutral. I never really find myself wanting to buy black bags, if I'm honest. Uh, I don't know. I, I just feel like it's, I have a lot of them. I don't wear them all that much, I guess. Recently, I feel like that's changed. I feel like I'm swallowing my words. But I was like, okay, I'm excited about the black one. I'll make it fun. So I start researching the straps. I had so much fun customizing it, kind of making it, again, my own. I love the way it sits on your body. So I was like, yeah, I don't need an oblique print one. Remember this, <laughs> remember me saying this. I was like, yeah, definitely the black. It's a classic, it'll be great. So I took it to your up, absolutely loved it. I love the way it wears on the body. It really feels like an integral part of an outfit, of a look, really kind of brings something spicy to it. And it feels so current and new while paying homage to something kind of historic from the house that I love so much. So absolutely loved wearing this guy. Woo. I'm not gonna lie, not a fan of how smooth and silky this leather is. I'm definitely a little nervous when I wear it. It's gotten a little bit of wear, not too bad, but you definitely have to be a little bit more careful. So while we were on the trip, I loved wearing it. Every time we walked by a Dior store, I walked in to make sure they didn't have any. <laughs> so that I felt really special about the fact that I got my hands on one. And it was the case all summer. It was impossible to get your hands on one. I felt pretty gosh darn cool. But here's the kicker. We come back from our wonderful European vacation. I had a great time with my Dior saddlebag and I find out that uh, in the new collection, they are in fact making the Dior oblique print but in the burgundy, which I love. And my, my heart kind of melts because I'm like, no, I really wanted that. And now I have a black one. What am I going to do? So what do I do? But I get the red oblique print one. And then I find out that they make a white one, which is my favorite neutral. And I'm obsessed with it. And I, and I see it on a bunch of bloggers that I respect and admire and love and love the way they style it. So what do I do? I call Leah and I end up with the white one too. So this is a sick addiction. 
and I definitely don't recommend it though they bring me a lot of joy I don't think it's I don't believe in buying the same bag in numerous colors by wearing it this often there's a better chance of you getting kind of sick of wearing it and because you have so many of them well you'll be stuck with more bags that you don't want to wear I never recommend buying the same bag in a million colors I've done it before it hasn't hasn't uh, done me well in the long haul but there's something different about this bag it is the first bag I ever got so there's kind of like a kindred spirit love attachment connection there is that like a lot of psycho hippie lies enough to convince you that I made a good choice. Anyways, I'm really, really happy with them. I reach for them all the time. I think they'll be a classic bag from now on. I hope they'll be a classic bag from now on that Dior will continue to provide new colors of and hopefully I will stop purchasing because this is, this is a sickness. I actually considered selling one of these and it was the oblique. I just thought it would be more red. It's definitely more of a burgundy purpley tones, which I don't, I don't wear it quite as often. It was great for the fall, but yeah, if I were to sell any of them, I think this would be the guy and I think the white one is the one I reach for the most also. Different fun straps. I love like an OCD moment like matching meets a matching strap. But yeah, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a sickness I have to say it's my favorite bag of the moment I don't have the favorite bag I've ever owned, but it's definitely up there Well now that you're aware of my strange addiction is it that strange? It's just sad. It's a sad addiction. I guess I have to wrap things up. I have one more bag for you guys. And though it may seem very similar, it is totally different. Uh, Valentine's Day is today. Happy Valentine's Day. When it, this video is published, it will no longer be Valentine's Day. But for Valentine's Day, my lovely husband uh, got me something special. <laughs> Look at how cute and tiny she is. She kills me. So quick story. I have to stop with these stories. This video is going to be ages long. I went to the Dior store last week because I wanted to order myself these earrings right here in time for Valentine's Day. They're like a little pearl tribal sort of style, but there's a P for Peter and I got myself C for Claude. I absolutely love them. So I ordered them. And while I was there, of course, I saw all the new colors. Pastels nonetheless. You know who loves a pastel? I do. Baby blue, baby pink, and I'm trying them on and I'm falling in love and I'm just, I'm just, I know it's a bad idea. So I tell Peter that we got to get out of there. I ordered my earrings. We're good. And as much as I love this tiny little Porky Pig, that's her name, by the way, his name. It's a dude. His name is Porky Pig. I don't name all of my bags, just the ones that are presents usually. This is Porky Pig. I leave this guy behind, even though I absolutely loved him. And we continue to shop around the store for a birthday present for a friend of mine. And Peter tells me he has to go to the bathroom and then he lost his wallet. And I'm like, what's up with this guy today? And as the car comes to pick us up because it was checked at valet. I'm about to get in and I look at Peter. I do a double take and I notice that he has a little Dior bag with him and he hands it to me and he says, happy Valentine's Day. And I nearly died. This is probably my favorite bag right now. I'm a big fan. So yeah, we've named him Porky Pig. Peter actually picked up the little Mitsu that goes with it. I absolutely love it. There's a little C for my name, Claude. I think the color really complements the pink as well. Not much fits in the small size of the saddle, I'm not gonna lie to you. If you can wear this every day without putting too much in it, that's amazing, but it feels like a great sort of evening tote that you can just put on really quickly, stick your credit card, your lipstick, your phone if it's not this big. I think the phone fits in it, actually. The phone would fit in it if I didn't put my wallet in it as well. But yeah, it's a great on-the-go sort of bag. It really spices up an outfit. Um, I wore it with this sweater Ta -da! Uh, last weekend and like PVC leggings and it looked absolutely adorable. I love both sizes. Right now, of course, I'm a big fan of the littler guy because it is more practical to me somehow. But yeah, both sizes I definitely recommend. I definitely also recommend this sort of caviar leather, which I have in the white. The black is a smooth leather and that's kind of stressful for it. So I definitely recommend if you have the option to always go for the grained leather. More durable, you feel less scared when you wear it. And also it, I, like a, I like a textured leather. It looks, it looks really pretty. So that's it. Have I babbled long enough? I'm so sorry. I guess I'm really attached and passionate about all of these little things. And I, I love sharing the stories of how I acquired them. So I hope you guys did too. And yeah, that's it. That was my Dior bag collection. So I hope part one lived up to the hype. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If so, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. And more importantly, I would love to know which designer house, which brand you'd like to see in part two. So make sure to put that in the comment box below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I actually feel pretty comfortable doing this video after all. It really felt good kind of telling all of my anecdotes and stories and my pros and cons on every different style. So I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell to find out when that next video goes up, hopefully next week. And yeah, thank you again so much for watching and I'll see you soon.